Ladies and gentle folk, welcome to Let's Play Morrowind. Doing this sooner than I sort of originally planned to, but fuck it, you know, circumstances and all that have changed. Um, yeah, here we are. The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. This has been a long fucking time coming. I've, I've played this game before on the channel. Like, I did that little hardcore Morrowind series, which was a little sort of Iron Man jobby, and I've streamed it a whole bunch of times and that sort of thing. But I always said I'd do a proper Let's Play of it, but then never really got around to it. Um, but, you know, I've decided, screw it, you know, uh, this is going to be a long-ass Let's Play. Might as well start it now. Uh, why the hell not? So, obviously if you couldn't tell already, I'm going to be playing modded Morrowind. It's, gonna, it's modded to fucking buggery, actually. Uh, and I, I'd like to take pains to point out at the beginning of this, it could be a complete disaster, doomed to failure from the beginning, this this playthrough, because everything was working nice and fine. I had MGSO installed and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, the, the, the graphics and sound overhaul, for those not familiar with it. Um, and then I found this mod called Morrowind Rebirth, which is sort of like... Um, I guess it's sort of like FCOM for Oblivion, but for Morrowind. It's that kind of a deal. Maybe not as extreme, but hey, whatever. Like unique landscapes, better cities, that kind of shit. It's basically like that for Morrowind. Um, and I had a, I had a look at it and it looked pretty cool and decided, fuck it, let's have a go. Let's have a go with it. Um, and I swear to Christ, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but... I was sat there and I was like, well, let's take this one really, really big detailed overhaul mod for Morrowind, and let's take this other really big overhaul mod for Morrowind, and let's smush them together like a complete amateur and see what comes out the other end. Long story short, I've spent the better part of two days now trying to fix my installation and get it actually so it's working without giant yellow exclamation marks popping up everywhere. And there'll be a few of those, don't you worry. Um, <laughs> I keep running into them everywhere. For some reason, half the tables in the game seem to... Well, not half of them, but like every now and again I find like a table. Except it's not a table, it's turned into a yellow ex exclamation mark. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you will see soon enough, I'm sure. Um, I'll probably be error messages popping up every now and again. Uh, that sort of thing. It's uh, it's a mess, but it's not nearly as much of a mess as it was before. Um, and anyway, by some miracle, I've, I've managed to get it working. In theory, MGSO and Morrowind Rebirth and Tamriel Rebuilt are all compatible with each other. In theory. According to the mod maker, whose instructions I followed, and that only seemed to make things worse. So, fuck it. Whatever. Just want to put that out there. This, this is a very held together with duct tape and, and prayers sort of a installation I've got going on here so don't expect uh, too much it might all crash and burn horribly but uh, we'll see uh, normally it wouldn't be such a big deal to fix these things but Morrowind is a bit funny the way with the way it's save games and stuff works so anyway we'll see oh shit I'm doing that thing again where I just waffle like an idiot for like 10 minutes at the beginning of a video on the main menu screen without actually starting the game. So anyway, let's, I'll, I'm going to shut up. Um, if you watched like the little teaser trailer thing I put up um, a little while ago, you'll have a basic idea of, of what this Let's Play is sort of going to be like, the character and that sort of thing. We're going to be play, playing as a guy called Fathis Ulvin, because I don't think that was it was his given name. In, in the trailer or anything. I can't remember. I made it a while ago now. Um, and he's a dark elf who used to work at the Imperial Palace in, in Cyrodiil. And uh, fuck it. Let's just press new game and I'll explain this as we go along, shall we? Right, we're going to get a black screen now. Don't worry, it's supposed to do that. Kind of kind of supposed to do that, whatever. Um, oh, there we go. Stand up. There you go. You were dreaming. What's your name? As I explained, my name's Fathis Ulven. That's how it's spelt, in case you're wondering. I just plucked it off the Tamriel rebuilt name generator, so... <laughs> 
Um, nothing to it really. Uh, but he just had a nice ring to it anyway. So, yeah, Fathus Ulvan. We're an old dude. We're playing as an old guy this time. All my other Let's Plays have been like with characters who are quite young. So I decided, fuck it, we're going to play as an old guy. And they've all been with like magic characters or fighter characters. And this guy's going to be sort of a. I don't really want to call him a stealthy character because stealth in this game is kind of a bit dodgy and weird. But I call him a sneaky character anyway. Um, so let's just okay that. Not even last night's storm could wake you. I heard them say we've reached Morrowind. I'm sure they'll let us go. I'm sure they'll let me go. I don't know about you. <laughs> Quiet. If you had a little audio glitch in the background back then, this is where you. I don't really know what's. Come with me. I don't really know what's causing that. One of the things Moral Rend Rebirth adds is a bunch of new music to the game, which I wasn't going to go with originally. But actually, having listened to it a bit while I was doing all my mod testing, I decided I kind of liked it, so it's staying. However, when one of the modded tracks starts, there's a little on my computer at least. There's a little zip sort of audio glitch, very unnoticeable really, but it's still there and it's a little bit annoying. Don't really know why that's there, but or even if it's showing up on the video for that matter. But anyway, yeah, that's what that is. Now the game is going to tell us how to fucking move around because we're complete that idiots. Yeah, I'm doing it. Um, normally we'd be able to interact with all this stuff, but um, did just interact with the worn chest, but I can't get anything out of it because we're still in the tutorial. Also, I, I feel it necessary to point out there's all these hammocks here, yet for some reason we were sleeping in the back there. I, whatever. So anyway, what's the deal with Fath is I can't show you what he looks like, obviously, because we've done, not done that a bit yet. Uh, Morrowind's kind of weird like that. All the other games, you make your character's appearance first. In this game, you don't. As as Righto. Do you have any smart Alec remarks for me, Mrs? The sooner you leave, the sooner we can move on. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Behold! The world and really, really bad frame rates. Head down to the dock and I'll show you to the census office. Yes, yes. Um, I, I wonder, I think this keeps resetting itself every time I launch the game. Yeah, it does. I need to lower the view distance a bit there. Which doesn't actually lower my view distance, it just sort of reduces the range at which detailed objects are rendered. It's fucking crazy and it's dodgy and it's weird, but that's just what you get with modern Morrowind. Shut your face. Um... You finally arrived, but our records don't show from where. Not sure about your haircut, mate. Um... Yeah, veterans of Morrowind will already have noted that these guys' outfits have changed. Um... That's one of the things that the Morrowind Rebirth does. Anyway, um, so yeah, this is not what Fathis Ulvan looks like. Uh, <laughs> sounds not like that. Fucking hell. Um, I believe that's the man in question, and that's his haircut. There we go. So this is our man, Fathis Ulvin, and um, he's he's a dark elf, but he was pretty much he was born in Morrowind, and then his family moved off to Cyrodiil. And that's where he's lived his entire life. He's never really set foot in Morrowind until now. Um, he's going to get called Outlander all the time by the NPCs anyway, so, you know. Um, anyway, he's kind of a posh dude. He's kind of a posh dude. Um, and uh, he, he used to work at the Imperial Palace, like I said. But he wasn't really... He was like a sort of... Outwardly, like a diplomatic aid functionary type guy, just sort of, sort of a steward, or whatever. But he was basically this an agent, like he was a backstabbing dude, a backroom boy. It's what they call him in politics. Um, he did people's dirty work for them, you know, cause accidents, you know, quote unquote accidents, um, murder people, that sort of thing. Um, he was a sort of he was a political animal in a way, and basically. He was doing a bunch of work for a bunch of people, very important, influential, high up people, um, and his payment for doing it was going to be that he was going to be offered a place on the Elder Council. So he's pretty fucking high up in the in the whole hierarchy, if you see what I mean. And unfortunately, 
when he and this he was a young man when this happened as well. He wasn't an old dude like he is now. Um, when when he did this, did, did all these things to help these people out that he was working for. He did it all successfully, but in the end, they basically just betrayed him, they stabbed him in the back, they threw him in the Imperial City prison, and left him to rot for basically the you know the better part of his life. Like the prime of his life, he pretty much wasted it in a dank, windowless cell in a dungeon at the very bottom of the Imperial City prison. Um, so, he stayed there for a very long time, um, getting very, very sort of bitter and resentful about everything. Um, tried to escape, failed. And um, eventually, one day, he was basically dragged from his cell out to the daylight, which he hadn't seen for fuck since fuck knows when. And he was tossed on a carriage, then taken to the docks, thrown on a boat, that boat behind us, um, and brought to Morrowind. For reasons which will later in the game become abundantly clear, but for now he's at a bit of a loss. He doesn't really know why they've done this. Maybe they've just taken pity on him or something after all these years. But he's been released. And even though he's an old man now, uh, he's, he's still very, very bitter and resentful and he wants to get his revenge. And he wants to do that by doing what he does best, basically. He's going to do all his political backstabby stuff. He's going to climb his way up the greasy pole. But he's going to do it for himself this time. As opposed to for, for someone else. I'm struggling to maintain the sentence here, but anyway. Um, that's his motivations and that sort of thing. About this Ulven here, suffice to say, he's a bit of a bastard. He's not a nice character. Um, on the whole... So that's what you should expect, really. Provided that, you know, like I said, the game doesn't implode on itself. And just, you know, explode error messages everywhere because mods bay. Great. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Follow me up to the office and they'll finish your release. Sweet Jesus, we've only just done the face selection and I'm 13 minutes in. Good God. Anyway. <laughs> uh... You know, it's episode one of one of my Let's Plays. What the fuck do you expect? At this point, guys. Come on. Come on. Let's be honest. At least the character creation tutorial stuff in this game is mercifully short. Compared to, like, Oblivion or Skyrim or whatever. Ah, uh, yes. We've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be recorded before you're officially released. There are a few ways we can do this, and the choice is yours. Um, don't all let all this lovely voice acting, by the way, fool you. This game does not have a lot of voice acting in it. Most of the dialogue is done by text, which I will have to read out for you guys, I guess. And that's probably going to stress my vocal cords to the fucking limit, because believe me, there's a lot of dialogue in this game. But whatever, we'll give it a go. Um, so yeah, we get to answer his questions, which generates a class based on the, the answers to our questions. This is a thing that was left over from Arena and Daggerfall that made it into Morrowind, but never made it into Oblivion or Skyrim. Um, we can give him the info, which lets us pick a class, predetermined class from the list, or we fill out the forms ourselves and create a custom class. I'm going to create a custom class anyway, but I'm also going to answer the questions, just because I haven't done it in ages, and it's just one of the one of the little peculiarities of Morrowind, which I always liked. On a clear day, you chance upon a strange animal, its leg trapped in a hunter's claw snare. Judging from the bleeding, it will not survive long. What do you do? So yeah, it's kind of a multiple choice thing, as you can see, and based on your answers, he gives you a class, which I will reject and then make my own one, but hey, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's also kind of a little miniature exercise in, in role-playing, I guess. Um, so, we use our herbs, do not interfere in the natural evolution of events. No, 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 not at all, my dear fellow. Fathis Ulven, or I'll just call him Fathis from now on. Um, he uh, he loves to interfere in the natural evolution of events. That's like his job. <laughs> so, um, let's draw our dagger and mercifully end its life with a single thrust. He has no tolerance for weakness. One summer afternoon, your father gives you a choice of chores. What would you rather do? Go catch fish at the stream using a net and line. Gather herbs for your mother who's preparing dinner. Work in the forge with him casting iron for a new, a new plow. Um, 
he's a meditative sort, I think, actually. He's not much... He, like, he can fight, but fighting's not really his thing, actually. He's not a very combative character, actually. To be fair, he's, he's a schemer, not a, not a fighter. Um, we'll say go catch fish at the stream using a net and line. I think he... Of the three options, that's the one he'd pick. Your cousin has given you a very embarrassing nickname, and even worse, likes to call you it in front of your friends. You have asked him to stop, but he finds it very amusing to watch you blush. What do you do? We can make up a story that makes your nickname a badge of honor instead of something humiliating. Make up an even more embarrassing nickname for him and use it constantly, constantly until he learns his lesson. Or beat him up. Um. Hmm. Fathers can be kind of a thug when he wants to. But this one, I think, is far more delicious to him, anyway. Um, ruin someone through scandal, oh yes. Uh, make up an even more embarrassing nickname for him and use it constantly, yep. There is a lot of heated discussion at the local tavern over a group of people called telepaths. They've been hired by certain city-state kings. Rumor has it these telepaths read a person's mind and tell their lord whether a follower is telling the truth or not. You believe what? What do I believe? Loyal followers to the king have nothing to fear from a telepath. It is important to have a method of finding assassins and spies before it is too late. This is a terrible practice. The person's thoughts are his own and no one, not even a... No, 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 I don't even have to read the rest of that. That's not the one he'd pick. There's a necessary evil, although you do not necessarily like the idea a telepath could have certain advantages during a time of war. I think you'd go with this one. Yeah. Um. Provided he was the one in charge. Like, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> you know, um. Your yeah. mother sends you to the market with a list of goods to buy. After you finish... You find that by mistake, a shopkeeper has given you too much money back in exchange for one of the items. What do you do? Uh, pocket the extra money, knowing that shopkeepers in general tend to overcharge customers anyway. Return to the store and give the shopkeeper his hard-earned money. Decide to put the extra money to good use and purchase items that would help your family. Pocket the extra money. Hell yes. While in a marketplace, you witness a thief cut a purse from a noble. Even as he does so, the noble notices and calls for the city guards. In his haste to get away, the thief drops the purse near you. Surprisingly, no one seems to notice the bag of coins at your feet. What do you do? Leave the bag there, knowing that it's better not to get involved. Pick up the bag and signal to the guard, knowing that the only honorable thing to do is to return the money to its rightful owner. Keep Pick up the bag and pocket it, knowing that the extra windfall will help your family in times of trouble. Okay, weirdly enough, I'm going to go with the middle one, because I think, to, 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 to him, earning favour with, with a noble, a rich, powerful guy, is way better than just a simple bag of coins, you know. Earning favour with this guy could earn him many bags of coins in the future, so this seems like the savviest thing to do. Your father sends you on a task which you loathe, cleaning the stables. On the way there, pitchfork in hand, you run into your friend from the homestead near your own. He offers to do it for you, in return for a future favor of his choosing. What do you do? We can accept his offer, reasoning that as long as the stables are cleaned, it matters not who does the cleaning. Decline his offer, knowing that your father expects you to do the work, and it's better to not be in debt. Um, ask him to help you, knowing that two people can do the job faster than one. Agree to help him with one task of his choosing in the future. I think we would go for the middle one, because... Fathus does not like being in debt to people. He likes people to be in debt to him, if you see what I mean. Your mother asks you to help fix the stove. While you're working, a very hot pipe slips its moorings and falls towards her. What do you do? Push mother out of the way. That would be the most sensible thing to do, would it not? While in town, the baker gives you a sweet roll. Delighted, you take it into an alley to enjoy only to be intercepted by a gang of three other kids your age. The leader demands the sweet roll, or else he and his friends will beat you and take it. <laughs> what do you do? We could give him the sweet roll now without argument. I mean, late, later this afternoon, you will have all your friends with you, and he can come and take whatever he owes you. 
drop the sweet roll, step on it, then get ready for the fight. Act like you're going to give him the sweet roll, but last minute throw it in the air, hoping they'll pay attention to it long enough for you to get a shot in on the leader. Ooh. This one, this one, definitely. You kill, cut the head off the snake, the body withers, etc., etc. That's that's the approach we'd take, I think. Entering town, you find that you are witness to a very well dressed man running from a crowd. He screams to you for help. The crowd behind him seems very angry. What do you do? Ooh. Rush the man's aid immediately, despite your lack of knowledge of, of the circumstances. Rush to the town's aid immediately, despite your lack of knowledge of the circumstances. Stand aside and allow the man to, and mob to pass, realizing it is probably not be best not to get involved. I would go with the third one, because we could rush to the powerful man's aid, you know, like like with the other question, because we, if we earn, an, earn a favor from him, you know. But he could have done something really fucking terrible. Um... Which would just make everybody hate us and probably get us nowhere, so... Yeah. A personality and past reflect a pilgrim, apparently. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, if it had given us something like Agent, I would have been very impressed. But hey, never mind. Um, we'll create a custom class. And I'm going to type in Agent, because that's basically what it was. Um, there is a class called Agent in the game, but it doesn't have the skills I want, so... Major skills. First one is gonna be Conjuration. He's he's a magic y kind of magic slash stealthish kind of character. It's a bit complicated, but hey. Um bit of a jack of all trades, I suppose, but mostly magic and stealth. Um so yeah, Conjuration, because summoning minions is great. Um We'll go with Illusion because charming people. And, and turning yourself invisible is also fantastic in this line of work. Um, medium armor? No, fuck that. We do not want that. We want sneak. Sneaking about is good. But the thing is, I've never tried a really properly stealthy character in Morrowind before, and I'm, I'm, I always thought it probably sucked because the sneak system in this game is really bloody basic, and enemies don't sort of, not like in Oblivion and Skyrim, they don't sort of patrol around in obliging manners that allowed you to allow you to sneak past them, they just sort of stay put, the game really isn't designed around stealth at all, but I figured what the hell, let's give it a go um see how we get on, because in theory if we've got good sneak, we can sneak past a lot of the powerful enemies in this game and get to their treasure because it's worth pointing out that in Morrowind enemies aren't leveled, you know, as in they don't scale to your level, um, so it's really fucking hard, and especially with Mara in Rebirth, apparently that makes it even harder, so... Um, this might be a wise investment, actually, because it might be, like, until, for a long time before I can actually kill powerful things, but I might be able to sneak past them. We'll see. Anyway, um... We'll go with... For the last... I think we want Short Blade. Which might seem like a really del dodgy, silly thing to pick when you've got things like Longblade and Axe and stuff like that to choose from, but actually um, there are some really bitchin' short blades in this game some really fucking badass daggers and long swords you can get, so um, it's really not as crap as it might seem uh, in fact, one of the one of the main key items you need to win the game is, is a short sword I will spoil that for you um, so, you know <clears throat> anyway Last major skill. Speechcraft, maybe? No. Fuck that. Alteration. Let's just unlock doors and walk on water and all that kind of cool stuff, so. Um, those are our major skills. Basically, the way major and minor skills work, if you've never played this game before, major skills you can level up, I think, 10 times. If you level up 10 major skills, you, you like get a level up. If you measure up. If you level up 20 minor skills, you get a level up. If you see what I mean, they're worth half these are when it comes to progress towards your next level. Basically. Um, and your starting bonus isn't as big. Anyway, minor skills are going to be long blade. So I do have a slightly heftier alternative to a short sword or a dagger. Um, and I will need that for some of the faction lines I want to go down. Um, it's worth pointing out that while I am going to be role-playing with this game a fair bit, in Morrowind, you also kind of have to metagame. That's just the way the, the game is built. It's it's 
you almost have to think of it in some ways a, a bit like a, a roguelike or something. Any any game where you have to use a lot of meta knowledge about the game to, to succeed properly. Because this game is really fucking hard compared to Oblivion or Skyrim. It really is. Like, I can't overstate that enough. Um, certainly to begin with, this game is tough as balls. And um, you really have to be able to know how to exploit the game and use your stats and skills and stuff properly in order to be able to succeed. So... While I'm going to be role-playing as much as I can, there is also an element of... I kind of need to... The game is almost designed for you to, to exploit it, if you know what I mean. It's very difficult for me to explain, but... It's like the developers want you to kind of be a bit of a scumbag about it, because that's how you succeed. <laughs> Essentially. Um, but anyway. So yeah, long blade. I'm going to want that. Um, axe. Nope. Nope. Nope, nope. Speechcraft instead. Speechcraft, that's going to make people wince, but... Because speechcraft's a bit of a shitty skill in this game. In fact, it's, it's one of the few shitty skills. Like, most of the skills in this game actually have a good purpose, along with the attributes. They're all useful in some way, which is better than... Better than Oblivion, for certain. Um, but speechcraft is one of the shittier ones, to be fair. But I'm just taking it because that's his thing. His, as a character, speechcraft is the thing with him. And, you know, if you, you can get really... If you do get really good at it, it saves you money and things like that. But, hey. Um, what else? Not security. Uh, I think lockpicking is the sort of thing that Fathis would pay someone else to do. Rather than do himself. Um, mysticism would be a good one. That will allow us to do all sorts of really cool stuff, actually. No longer in Skyrim. And it's barely in Oblivion, but you can do some really nifty tricks with mysticism. Um, alchemy, that's the dead cert. And let's see, do, 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 what am I missing? Light armor, that's what I was missing. Light armor, yeah. I don't do light armor runs very much in this game for characters. I usually t tend to stick with medium or occasionally heavy, to be fair. Most of the best armor in the game is medium and heavy, but... There are some really good light suits of light armor as well, and it, I just like it because it means we're more, more mobile than stuff, so. Um, favorite attributes. The th two things Fathis respects most in a person are willpower and intelligence, so we're going to pick those. They're magic -y attributes anyway, mostly. Um... His specialization, I'm going to make magic, just so I can increase... Like, these magic skills are going to be important. Like, really fucking important. The... the Things like sneak and short blade and light armor, they're going to increase naturally quite a bit. Um, just over time, because I'll be using them the most. So, uh, it makes more sense for me to go with magic specialization, because it'll allow these to increase a bit faster, these magic ones I've got. Um... Without having to spam them in order to increase them. So, anyway, yeah, that's what I'm going with. Very good. The letter that preceded you mentioned you were born under a certain sign. And what would that be? We were born under the sign of the shadow. Because we are a shadowy character. But also, it gives us a power. Once per day, we can be invisible for 60 seconds. Which is great. Because even if we can't sneak past something, we can just run past it willy-nilly while invisible. Which is great. So... That could get out some tough spots, to be fair. Interesting. Now, before I stamp these papers, make sure this information is correct. There we go. And a character summary. So, let's have a look at our starting skills. Short Blade 40. That's nice. That's really good, actually, for a level 1 character. Having a, a weapon skill of 40. That will mean that I will at least begin to start hitting things more than missing them in combat. Um... Alteration, Illusion, Sneak, Conjuration are all good, Long Blade's good, Mysticism are good, it's all good really, Speechcraft is the one that's really suffering, but fuck Speechcraft, frankly. Um, as you can see, I've got one or two here which are quite high as, as they are, Destruction is 20, because we're a Dark Elf. Um, that's fine. I'm not restricted to these skills by any stretch of the imagination, and it's quite easy to increase non- major or minor skills in this game because you can use a trainer unlimited numbers of times provided you've got the money for it you're not restricted to five times per level like you are in oblivion or skyrim so um 
yeah, I, I, I may, may, I may start using destruction in the future. But the main thing is, it's just increasing that won't, it won't contribute to my, my level going up. That's the, that's the only difference really here, to be honest. Um, I don't think they'll increase quite as fast naturally, but you know, whatever. Forty health, fifty magicka, one hundred sixty fatigue. It's pretty average, really. Fifty intelligence, fifty speed. That's pretty good. Um. 40 agility, that's alright. Yeah, it's all a bit average. Personality's not very good. Um, but never mind, we can increase that later. Excuse me, had to cough. Um, right, so as you can see, I put a bit of thought into this. And I know this is taking a while, we're at like 31 minutes now, but fuck it. Character creation in Morrowind's kind of important, and... This game, more than any of the other Elder Scrolls games, is one where I, I put a lot of thought into how I'm going to build a character and what kind of character build I'm going to do. I have a lot of fun in Morrowind coming up with different weird character builds. Um, because it completely changes your play style. Um, lets you do different things. Different. It, it, it's just, it's it's it doesn't compare to something like Skyrim. Skyrim, your decision is literally, am I going to kill things with magic? Am I kill, going to kill them with a big sword or am I going to kill them with a bow and that's about as, as far as it goes but in this game there's so many other alternatives to the way you you, you tackle the game um, and it all comes down to how your character is set up to begin with so you know show your papers to the captain when you exit to get your release fee right we're going to want to take this for release by Emperor Uriel Septim the 7th decree to the district of Vardenfell in the province of Morrowind. Note, by the way, that is Vardenfell. V-V-A-R-D-E-N fell. Not Vanderfell. I swear to Christ, I've, I've seen so many people spell out Vanderfell for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's a localization thing. Maybe their version of the game says Vanderfell. Fuck, fuck if I know. But I've seen so many people write it Vanderfell. And these are people who, t who say they've played the game for years. Um... So yeah, that's just a weird thing. Maybe it's one of those just things like people say cavalry or nuclear instead of nuclear or cavalry. But hey, whatever. Um, yeah, so our name is Fathers Ulven. We're a Dark Elf. We're an agent. Signed, Sakushus Egala, that guy over there. Agent of the Sedanine Imperial Census and Excise. This 16th of last seed, 3E427. We now have an inventory menu where we can see what we're carrying. For the glory of the Empire. We are the Imperial Legion. We swear our lives at an unyielding loyal. I can't talk at me anymore. I'm sorry. My reading abilities have completely failed me. Um, I'm just talking gibberish. We believe in honor, swift justice, the innocent, our unbreakable bond to our brothers in the Legion. Unshakable courage. That's just a it's like a pamphlet for the Imperial Legion. Not, not that interesting, really. Um, you will notice. That the crafty, clever um, Morrowind Rebirth modder has replaced the limeware platter that was on this shelf over here normally in the vanilla game with a redware platter that's worth 15 gold. The limeware platter was worth like fucking 500 gold. And it was a really cheap exploit people would do, where they would go over here, they would pick it up, drop it on the floor, boom, quickly. The guard would come over and say, naughty, naughty, you're not allowed to steal things. We'll let you get away this time. Uh, but once you're out the doors and into the wide world, they'll arrest you properly. Um, and then people will just be like, okay, pick up the limeware platter because that's how the game's AI worked and you, you could walk off with it scot-free. <clears throat> Coughing again. I pro I apologise, I really do. Um, tickly throat. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> the mod has got rid of that and I like that. That's quite clever. Um, so many people are going to install this mod, make a new character, run over there and be like, oh shit, no more limeware platter. <laughs> anyway, so we've got a bunch of stuff here. I think some of these will initiate tutorial pop-ups if we pick them up. Possibly. I think that one was supposed to, but it didn't. There we go. You can eat ingredients by equipping them on your character in the inventory menu. Ingredients have different properties. Some may hurt you and some may help. We've got a lockpick, which we can try on this chest with lock level 1, which is like insanely easy. Even the village idiot could open this thing with a lockpick. Also, you will notice, this is all lockpicking consists of. I waggle my lockpick at the chest, and I wait until it opens. 
In this case, I'm apparently even more stupid than the village idiot because I didn't manage to open that. Wow. <laughs> it's the first time that's ever happened to me. Um, so we can pinch stuff from chests and containers. Um, silverware pitcher. Oh, there's the. There it is. There's the flynn I was looking for. Valuable stuff, that. Um, basically, what we're doing right now is we're picking up a bunch of stuff and we're nicking it. I don't know where we're putting it, by the way. Like, stuffing it down our shirt or whatever, but... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just pinching all this stuff because we're going to sell it. Because we need money. You start off with absolutely fuck all money in this game. You can't even, like, buy a proper suit of armor with it. Um, and you don't pick one up, either. As part of the tutorial, you just get shoved out the door in what you're wearing, like this, so... Need to get things that we can sell. Oh, hello. This is different. Hello. What is your name? Fal said, Abitius. I bet if I try to talk to him... Who's there? Yeah, goodbye. It's a bug in this game. Like, if, if you talk to someone through a door, they can't see you. And therefore the AI is like, well, like, you can't see the person I'm talking to. So they just go, who's there? When you try to talk to them. Even if it's a door which is, like, see-through like this. So, whatever. Hello. She doesn't want to talk to me, whatever. I'm just some ex-convict. A reinforced wooden door that's locked level 50. That makes me curious. That wasn't there either in the original game. Hmm. Alright, well, where's my music gone? Where the fuck is my... Is that... Oh, has it got that thing where it's got, like, a blank music track in the game? Um, as a result of MGS, I think it might have done that. I might leave it in, I'm not sure. Sometimes it is nice to have the music off, so you can just hear the noises. Like that, you can hear in the background, because we're in a swamp right now. Um, you have a map menu, it shows you the name of the place you're at, and all that sort of thing, yeah. Local map, world map. As you can see, it's bloody fucking massive. Um, yeah, um... I've, as you can see, I've got Tamriel Rebuild installed, obviously. I've got Blood Moon installed, because Solstheim is up there. Yep, fans of Skyrim, Solstheim was in Morrowind originally. It's not a new thing at all. Um, we're down here at Sadenine. This island here is Vardenfell. This is mainland Morrowind, of course, which you, of course, can't see all of, because Tamriel Rebuild haven't finished making it yet. Um, further to that... Um, even though I've got, like, all of this mainland around here, on here, and this looks absolutely massive, you can probably agree. Um, this, to point, put together, this is, like, probably twice the size of Skyrim's map. It's huge. Um, but, here's the thing. Um, everything, all of this, around here, all of this, up to this big canal river thing here. That is fine. That's totally playable. It's got NPCs, it's got quests, it's got factions, it's got all sorts of shit to do. Everything along here, on this side, not including Solstheim, yeah. But everything along here, this is purely cosmetic. There's nothing there. There's a bunch of towns and stuff. And all the external stuff is, is done and that sort of thing. You can have a look around and see how pretty it is and that sort of thing. And believe me, it's fucking awesome, some of this stuff. Like, these mountains up here are brilliant. Um, there's like an entire swamp here, which was once a swamp, but has now been turned into an ash waste swamp because it was hit by a volcano blast or something. It looks amazing. It's so cool. Um, there's some mega awesome cities and stuff around here, but the problem is there's no NPCs anywhere and there are no interior cells, so you can't go into anything and in through any doors, into buildings or dungeons and things. And there comes the music. Um, it's all alpha stuff. It's literally just, it's in the game so that you can run around and have a look at it if you want to, but none of it's playable. So, for all intents and purposes, this all here, this coastline we'll be able to see across the sea from Sedanin is basically just eye candy. I really, I won't be going there uh, during the Let's Play unless they release a version of Tamriel Rebuilt where they've added in NPCs and stuff for this, in which case I'll update it, obviously, and then we can go have a jolly around the... Uh, western side of uh, Morrowind, but yeah. Um, I just thought I should get that out of the way, because that's kind of a major thing. Like, half the world map on here isn't really accessible. <laughs> um, but all this shit over here is. All of this. And, and trust me, all of the stuff over here is amazing. It's really cool. Um, but anyway. Because I've got Morrowind Rebirth installed, there's all sorts of new shit over here in Vardenfell as well. So, we're, we're heading out into the unknown in many ways. 
even though I've played this game a bajillion times before. Anyway, you weren't here originally, and you certainly sure as hell weren't. I'm sure you have questions, go ahead, ask, I have plenty of time. I have no questions to ask you, because I know I, I have no dialogue. I'm sorry. Um, what we do need to do is get this engraved ring of healing out of the barrel, so that we now have a magic menu. Which is this here. Um, as you can see, we've started off with a bunch of spells, because we've got skills in, in certain spells. We've got Chameleon, which makes us 20% harder to see. Um, for 10 seconds, which is really fucking useless, but whatever. We've got Detect Creature, which will, I think, will cast it, and then animals will show up on our on our local map um, as dots or whatever. Also kind of crap, basically. Um, Sanctuary, which is quite good, but it only lasts for 10 seconds. It basically makes us ha harder for enemies to hit us in combat. Shield, which is excellent. It just gave, gives us more magic armor, basically. Summon Ancestral Ghost, which is awesome. Particularly because a ghost, as you may be familiar with from Oblivion, cannot be harmed by anything other than silver weapons and above. So, summoning that against weak enemies, there's nothing they can do to kill it, unless they've got magic. Um, and we've got Water Walking, which is also pretty useful. Um, so, yeah. We've also got Ancestor Guardian, which makes us mega hard to hit for 60 seconds, but we only get to use it once a day. And we've got Moon Shadow, which makes us invisible for 60 seconds. So there we go. And we've also got our engraved Ring of Healing, which I can equip and use whenever I want. It has a charge of 20 points, which is really shit. But, if I, there we go, just used it to heal myself, even though I had no damage. But screw it. Um... Magic items in this game recharge by themselves. You can speed up the process with soul gems, but they will just recharge by themselves, so usually it's easier to just go and sleep for the night and it will recharge in the morning, um, which is really cool. So that grid ring of healing, even though by itself it's a bit crap, actually it's quite good because it recharges, so. Hello. <coughs> right. Reading time. Okay, first, let me take your identification papers. Thank you. Word of your arrival only reached me yesterday. I am Celis Gravius, but my background is not important. I'm here to welcome you tomorrow. And so this is the way the, um, the dialogue works in this game. You have text and you have hyperlinks, which you can click, which gives you a new topic. You ask him about Morrowind and he gives you more info. You don't have, it's really fucking weird to be honest with you. Um, it's, it's very strange. I never really understood it. I don't know what's wrong with a simple multiple choice dialogue thing like every other RPG ever has used. Um, but whatever, this is just the way it is. Sometimes you get multiple choice bits, but it's very rare. Um, so yes, you're in Morrowind. I don't know why you're here, or why you were released from prison and shipped here. But your authorization comes directly from Emperor Uriel the Septim himself. Did I say Emperor Uriel the Septim? I guess he is a septim, but fuck it, whatever. I'm, I'm tired, it's late. Guys, I'm, it's late at night, I'm recording this. Anyway, I don't need to know any more than that. When you leave this office, you're free, but before you go, I have instructions on your duties, instructions from the Emperor, so pay careful attention. Instructions from the Emperor, eh? We would be foolish to ignore them, wouldn't we? Um, this package came from with the news of your arrival. You are to take it to Gaius Corsades. In the town of Balmora. Go to the. By the way, I'm gonna. Uh, the, the, it, Morrowind's infamous for having lots of names which are really difficult to pronounce. I will fail miserably at most of them, just so you know. <laughs> um, go to the South Wall Corner Club and ask for Caius Cassades. They'll know where to find him. Serve him as you would serve the Emperor himself. I also have a letter for you and a dispersal to your name. We've been given directions to Caius Cassades. We've been given a package for Caius Cassades. And, um, 87 gold, which is really crap, by the way. Um, report to Kaius Cassades in Balmora. I can't tell you where to find him, but you have to go to the South Wall Corner Club and ask for him. Someone there can direct you to him. Right. Yes, what about Uriel Septim, then? Yes, Uriel Septim is still the Emperor. Of course, I've been locked away in prison for fuck knows how long. Um, <laughs> so who, we, why would we know? Um... He is still the Emperor, according to my instructions. He personally authorized your release. That's curious, isn't it? Um, 
from prison and your delivery here. Yes, it's all very mysterious, but that's the way the Empire works. Silence, secrecy, let not the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Yes, we know all about that. Yes, of course this is the Empire. This is Vardenfell District, the province of Morrowind, and Morrowind has been part of the Empire for over 400 years. The current Emperor is Uriel Septim, 24th of the Septim line. You haven't been in prison that long, have you? <laughs> Fuck, I don't know, actually. <laughs> um, probably not. Nothing wrong with your head. Is there the men? According to my reading skills, apparently there is. Um, the men said you were acting a little strange when they brought you <laughs> to the ship. Um, yeah, I was talking to myself, wasn't I? Like, the whole way. Talking about menus and things. And skills. And they were all very confused. So that's it, basically. We're off, on a, off we pop. Off we toddle. We're on our own now. Um, that's an interesting looking shield. Imperial Templar Tower Shield. I've never seen one of those before. Modded stuff. Press J to use your journal and review what you've been told. You should probably check out Ariel's Trade House on the left. You're on your own now. Good luck. And that is it. That is the tutorial for this game. And yeah, it's a bit of a joke, but also whatever. It's just how this game rolls. Hello, Fargoth. Are you the one that the boat dropped off? Odd to see a boat arrive at that time of day. I hope the Imperials treated you okay. I swear they took my ring. I swear one of the guards has it. I had it last week before their weekly Let's Shake Down Fargoth ritual. An engraved healing ring. Family heirloom of mine. You haven't seen it, have you? Uh, nope. Sorry. No ring. Not at all. Yep. What a wretched little man. I really don't um, have time for this, so make it quick. Yeah, funny thing to note, in Morrowind, some wood elves had horns on their heads. That did not translate into the later games. As to why, your guess is as good as mine. Um, so here we are. We're out in the world itself. Hello, Morrowind. Hello, Vardenfell. Hello, Sadanine, which admittedly looks a bit different to what I'm used to. Is that a, st that's a big ass statue? Hello. Hello me. Do you sell, I suppose you sell clothes, don't you? Yes, you do. I'd buy some to get rid of our shitty, horrible clothes at the moment we're wearing right now, but frankly, we can probably just take some off a dead dude, so... <laughs> um, it would be a waste of money. And we don't have much money. It is, it's, a, it's worth pointing out, though, actually. NPCs like you more in this game, the more... Um, the, the more expensive your outfit is. So, having an expensive shirt versus a common shirt is better. Because people like you more. Because you look richer and, and stuff. Um, that barrel has morphed with that rock. Interesting. Who are you, Cassius? Apparently you offer fast travel. To Kul or Hla Oed? I can't afford Kul and I don't want to go to Hla Oed. Or however the fuck you pronounce it. <laughs> um, fishies, which I can't do anything with. Um, four Kwama eggs. I shall take those. Generally stuff lying around in barrels and crates in public, you can just take. It doesn't belong to anyone, it's just there. Um, but obviously in this game there's no, like thing that pops up telling you that it's stealing to take it, so sometimes it's a bit of a lottery. You might pick up th something thinking, oh, that doesn't belong to anyone. It turns out it does, and everyone tries to kill you. There's an Imperial banner here. What's that about? Aranar Calais. Is that your, if that is your real name. Um, if you have questions, go ahead. Background. I am Aranar Thingy. Warrior. Latest rumours. My son was recently shipped up to Fro Frostmoth on the island of Saltsheim. I don't know what he did to deserve that, but it couldn't have been good. Right, yeah, that's basically the game telling you, Hey, you've got the Blood Moon expansion installed. Get your ass to Saltsheim. Um, but we're not going there. At least not for a while. Saltsheim's high level stuff, guys. I would get my ass killed if I went there. Um... But it is one of the cooler parts of this game, to be fair, so we will go there eventually. But hey, um, yeah, and that's just the way the game introduces it. As opposed to, like, in Skyrim or fucking Fallout or whatever, 
Well, no, it wasn't so bad in Skyrim, but in Fallout, definitely, in Oblivion. We would just come up with a message on your screen like, bang, hello. Your DLC is installed. Go here to see it. Um, it actually it filters through as a part of dialogue rumors and stuff. So, you know. So this is all new, basically. All this stuff around here. I've never seen it before. Hello. Are oh, you off for travel as well? You you are a boat guy. You you're wearing a boat guy's hat and everything. I guess this is your boat. Um, where do you offer travel to then? You take me to Balmora, do you? Well, I do need to go there. Interesting. I can get a I can get a riverboat to get Balmora now, apparently, as opposed to a silt strider. Which is what you normally got, unless you wanted to walk it. We might just walk it, though, to be fair, actually. Go explore. See what the world has to offer. Um, first character I ever made in Morrowind never made it to Balmora. He got lost on the way there and died. <laughs> and I hadn't saved the game, so I had to start again. Um, first time I ever played that game, uh, this game. And that, that was a very long time ago, I can tell you that much. So yeah, obviously, we've got all this distant terrain you can see in the background, which normally isn't here in this game. You have to use extensive fucking, and I really mean extensive mods to, to get that working. We're being attacked. And we have no weapons. Crap. Run. Run away from the rat. Uh, find a guard. Find a guard. The guard will kill it for me. There aren't any around here, though, because the cheap, poor-ass district where none of the guards come. Oh, crap. Nice statue, though. Never seen one of them before. Um, come on, gods, gods, where are you? There's one, there's two, right, come and save me from the horrible rat. It's probably got stuck on a piece of terrain actually somewhere, so I reckon they're safe. Oh no, here he comes. Kill it. There we go. Didn't stand a fucking chance. Guards on this game, by the way, are are badass. Like, even when you're level like twenty or something, these these assholes will give you a run for your money if you end up on the wrong side of them. They're they're crazy powerful. So, which in my case is a good thing because he just he just completely mullered that rat for me, which is nice. Um. But yeah. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, something about distant land. Yeah, that's a thing. Um. With the graphics overhaul as well, what you can get is 3D grass, like you get in Morrowind and Skyrim. You know, like actual grass waving around, long grass. Unfortunately, a side effect of having to use Morrowind Rebirth means that I can't have 3D grass. It's not compatible with Morrowind Rebirth for some reason. Um, but that's not such a big deal, because I can deal without it. The original game didn't have it, so I feel like I'm not really missing out on anything, really. Um... And as you can see, I think the game looks fine without it, but um, also, Tamriel rebuilt. None of this would have grass either, even if I did have grass installed for this mainland, main, main Vardenfell bit area for the original game. Tamriel rebuilt doesn't have it either, so it would look a bit weird. Like we would cross over the sea and suddenly all the grass had been mown by some phantom lawn, lawnmower, so... Um, yeah. Anyway, because people will ask about that. I know they will. People who've played this game before will ask, why don't you have any long grass installed? So this is a real trade house, which the tutorial thingy suggested we go to. It's basically a shop, essentially. Hello. Welcome to a real trade house. I'm a real publican and proprietor. Don't take what doesn't belong to you. You're on your face here. If you want to buy from me, blah, 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 blah. As you can see, NPCs in this game like to waffle on like crazy, and I'm not going to read most of it out, generally speaking. I just want to barter with him. I want to buy stuff and, and sell things, crucially, as well. Like this book, for instance. Um, I, I think, Fath, this is probably going to be a book, bit of a book-collecting character. Um, Definitely, but if I need to sell a book to get more money, he's going to do it in a heartbeat. Um, he's not like Idris, where he's like, I must have all of the books. He just likes them because he likes being able to call upon knowledge when, when which he doesn't know about, like so he can further his schemes and stuff. So he he probably going to collect books, especially valuable ones. Um, but for now, we're going to sell that because that's a really common book. You find that all over the place anyway, even though it's quite a cool one, the permanent, because it, it shows you all the star constellations, which you can actually see in the sky in the game. 
if you look for them, if you've got that to hand so you can check. Um, I am a dumbass. We did have a we did have a weapon the whole time. Oh my god. How did I forget that we had the iron dagger? And short blades is my skill, so... <sighs> Whatever. First of many fails to come, I think. Let's ditch these silver pitchers and the flint and the masti. I'm going to keep all this shit, though, because I need it for making potions. We could read our directions to Caius Cassades, and we could have a look at the package, although that won't avail as much, as you'll find out. Um, so that'll give us 25 gold. I can barter for a bit more, which I got away with. Although if I fail bartering too much, the guy will start to hate me, and I'll, the prices overall will get worse, which is not good, so... Um... We need light armor and we need a proper weapon. This dagger just ain't gonna cut it, I'm afraid. Um, an iron short sword should do it. It's pretty cheap, 20 gold. We've got 169 gold to play with, so we'll have that. We'll sell the iron dagger. A silver short sword's tempting, but it's bloody expensive. Um, uh, let's. We need some some form of armor at least, I think. Um, how about? We could just get a cheap and cheerful leather thing for 35 gold, but for four, for 10 more gold we could get a, a chitin, which I know is pronounced chitin, but fuck you. Um, <laughs> I've pronounced it this way forever, so I'm going to call it chitin. Um, I could get a chitin cuirass, um, which is much better, frankly. It's twice as good, in fact, according to this. So... I'm going to get that. I'll probably have it for a while, actually, because chitin armor is is actually quite good. It's it's really cheap, but it's also quite good um, as armor goes. It's it's the go-to jack of all trades, multi-purpose, cheapest chips, light armor in this game. And it's really nice. Um, I think that's kind of it. We could buy potions, but they're usually expensive and or useless, like fortify luck, for example, <laughs> um, or fortify personality. Even better. Um, there's a restore health, but they're 15 each, and I do not have a lot more gold to play with here. I've got 169, this is going to cost me 144, so... What I do need, though, really need, some more Repessel. And that's already, like, more than I can afford, so I'm going to have to try and barter him down. And it's just not going to work at all, like I can already tell. This is not even worth trying. Or apparently it is. What the fuck, game? When does that ever happen? Okay, um... Okay, so this guy's got more dialogue than the usual thing you get when you press background. I do have a mod installed called, well, a collection of little mods installed called Less Generic NPCs, which gives some of the NPCs in the game, not all of them, but some of them, more interesting dialogue. Evidently, this guy's one of them, because he's got, like, an entire text wall of info. Before coming to the island, I was a trader at an Imperial Fort on the mainland. When Vardenfell was opened and Sedanin founded, they granted me the management of the trade house, however... Since we are in the Hlalu district, that great, I told you, weird names in this game, great house. That great house is the official issuer of my license to operate here. It was a great opportunity. Not only do I have the exclusive contract for the Imperials, but also the rest of the town. So he's basically allowed to be the, the only trade house allowed in Sedanin, I guess. Um, apparently he provides logistical support for the legionary stationed here. Cool beans. He also offers spells, but obviously I have no gold, <laughs> so... Um, but that's that's cool, that was worth it. We've got a full... Bitch, well, almost full... Suit of... Um, chitin armor. Which is pretty good, actually. We just, we're just missing the greaves and the helmet. Um, but hey, that's pretty good, actually. We got lucky there. I don't mm. think he normally has a full suit of shit and armor on him because it's slightly randomized. Um, so here we got that, and we got our short sword, which is not a bad start in conjunction with our spells the or stuff. Sun so moons transform day to night, but what transforms the mind? <laughs> Trust me, guys, that is not the weirdest idle chatter you will hear in this game. It really isn't. <laughs> Uh, I have to admit, like, there's no, vo almost no voice acting in this game, but the voice acting that is in this game is quite often hilarious. Um, hello, 
risk our flat foot. You look like a scary man. I don't want to talk to you. Um, Raflod the Braggart. Um, it's not often that a new territory is open for exploration. Vardenfell's recent expansion was a rare opportunity for one of my trade. And you are a... Some sort of scout. Yeah, he's a scout. Um, new strange new creatures, exotic plants, and unexplored ruins. It seemed the Skyrim held no more novelty for me, and I was eager for new adventures. Topical! <laughs> um, thank you for that, Mr. NPC. <laughs> Hello, Eleni, or Elone. Who fucking knows? What's that? Is that a thing? Is that just a random object, or can I... I guess I can't look at that, no. Although I can't seem to access this piece of paper on the table either, so screw it, never mind. Um, just your regular old bog standard Morrowind Madness. And the music's disappeared again. I really should get rid of that silent track. Shouldn't I? Because everything just feels a bit more awkward when there's no music. Um, anyway, yeah, we're pretty much done with this place. We could sit around talking to the NPCs forever, but I'm not going to. And it looks like we've just got an hour and two minutes, so I'm going to cut it off here, I think. Welcome to welcome to Vardenfell. Welcome to um, Morrowind. Uh, hello, who the hell are you? Um, and welcome to Fathis, our friend here, who's on a... who's on the warpath. He's out for revenge, but it's going to take him a freaking long time, because everything does in Morrowind. <laughs> um... So yeah, welcome everybody, and uh, I, I'll hopefully see you again next time. I can't believe I spent yeah. an hour doing basically just character creation and then walking into a shop. Jesus Christ. It's a sign of things to come, guys. If you've made it this far into the video, I've probably got you for the next one anyway, so <laughs> I'll see you then. Bye.